When it comes to troubleshooting issues in your Bubble application, Bubble has a few different tools to help you catch the obvious things. First, there's the issue checker. This is going to surface any misconfigurations of dynamic expressions, uh, general settings in your application, right? Things that are required to have them technically be correct. You also have the debugger, uh, which will help you evaluate your dynamic setups, your dynamic expressions, your conditions in your visual designs, and also help you evaluate how your workflows are being executed. Okay, so these tools can help you catch the things that are technically set up correctly or incorrectly, and also help you understand why you're getting behavior that you are seeing when you preview your page. But this is, of course, not going to catch everything, right? Bubble doesn't know what you're building. So while you can technically put things together properly, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get the outcome that you intended. All right. And so when you find that you're troubleshooting something and it's a struggle, that things are much more complicated than they really should be, it may not be because your expressions are wrong, but more because your underlying structures are not right, not right for your app. That's the most important thing here. So you may need to take a few steps back and take a look at the underlying structure of not just your database, but also your page designs, right? So your database structure has a huge impact on how things can come together in your application. It affects how your data is queried, right? Whenever you do searches, it affects how you display data back to the user, how uh, data is managed, how it's updated, how you create information, how you create relationships between things. There's many ways to do things, um, you know, to get the same outcome, but not, not every approach is made equal. And this can be very dependent on what you are doing specifically in your app. Because Bubble doesn't know what you're wanting to do, it's up to you to craft together the most efficient logic, the most efficient architectures of your database and also of your page layouts. So if you have an inefficient data structure, right? You don't have the right relationships between things. Maybe your fields aren't set up with the right formats, or you have redundant structures between your tables or even just within the fields and the option sets. That can create a huge ripple effect of problems. It can overcomplicate your expressions to display things back to your users, can make it so much harder for you to troubleshoot and more. Uh, same thing goes for your front end page design. So how you're actually visualizing everything for your user. There's a lot of different settings and configurations to put your visual elements together from the responsive settings to managing, you know, the, the dimensions of your elements, uh, the alignment, the distribution, right? The spacing between your elements, the order in which you want to present these elements, conditional uh, visual properties, right? Whether something's gonna be hidden or visible, how you group things together. There are so many settings that can have a ripple effect on each other, on your expressions, right? One little change can impact a lot of things that happen around it and, and they may impact things indirectly too. So if you find yourself really struggling to troubleshoot something that should be simple, take a couple steps back and evaluate whether you even have the right underlying structure to begin with. Sometimes a simple change in your structure can make a world of difference and uh, you know clean up a lot of things for you can help you resolve a bunch of issues that you shouldn't even be having to deal with. So remember, just because something is uh, not working properly doesn't necessarily mean you are putting together your expression incorrectly or you've got the, raw, uh, the wrong um, you know, approach to some of the logic. It may have more to do with the underlying architecture. And that's the basis for everything. No matter what type of application you're building, you've got to start with those building blocks first. Promise it will save you a lot of time in the long run.